Welcome to this video where you're going to learn how to set up a video in Bubble and you'll also get the bonus of setting up a modular window like this, a pop-up that uh, you can utilize to have your video show. Now if you are looking for something more sophisticated like a video player with a playlist or something, drop a comment. Uh, this video is not that, but this video will show you how to set up a simple video player on a pop-up like this, which we are going to build, and um, let's dive into that. First, a note about user interfaces. Already set up in my app is this user interface of this uh, horizontal repeating group that shows these different tiles or cards or panels that you can click on. Now yours might be something more along the lines of a repeating group, or it just might be an individual element that you're trying to have show up, or you're going from you're just trying to drop video on a page and allow someone to play it. Well, you're going to learn how to basically handle all of those scenarios. So let's drop into our bubble area here, and this um, pop-up, I'm going to go ahead and delete it. And then over in our workflows, I'm going to remove any workflows, so you can see basically from scratch what is going on in this video. Now, if you're just looking for the video connection part, that part will be available uh, in the, the breakdown of minute by minute. Um, or the different timestamps throughout this video of what is being shown. So I just wanted to show off that we have this thing. This We're working with an exercise class here in today's video, but this was part of a yoga class app. And for this particular uh, class, or these classes, what they have in them, and that what we'll, we will be using, we'll be using the description, the title, the thumb photo, the video, and basically that's it. So let's go ahead and take a look at now designing, number one, the pop-up, and then two, connecting up the video for it. Okay, so what you want to do, to create a pop-up like this is grab a container, grab a group, and why are we not creating the uh, normal pop-up that you see in Bubble? Well, I'm not a huge fan of that one because it doesn't feel like other um, more popular pop-ups. And so we're going to create one of our own. Go ahead and center this one horizontally and put a max width when stretched of 160 so it'll look nice on an iPad as well. And then for the data type, uh, let's see. Yeah, we're gonna use yoga class, but we want group video pop-up for the description. For the background style, give it a flat color, 1212. Give it a roundness of 10. And then important, give it a shadow style and outset. I found a really good one that I like. If you just max the spread radius, and then you go with um, 212121, and then 85 for the opacity here, you get this nice uh, window that you can see the stuff on the background. I think the default bubble pop-up, you can't really see the stuff on the background, and that's I'm not a huge fan of it. I like the user to experience that they're still in the same place, but they're being focused on this particular window. So that's what we've got here. Okay, great. Now let's move on to visual elements. Let's grab a piece of text, drop that in. We're going to call this text title. And because we set up the data type of the parent group, we can just go and grab the title directly from it. And then we can remove the style. And then we're going to go for our dimensions, 190 by 20 by 20 by 16. For our font, we're going to go Leto 700, size 18, no line spacing, and F0, F0, F0. And then next, grab a group, drop that onto the page, and then go 32 by 32, and X value of 3, uh, 232, and the Y value of 10. Remove the style here because we want to give it a background of a flat color, 373737, and we want it to be 95 for the opacity, and then a roundness of 50. So basically we have this nice uh, background that we can drop now a X mark in. So here under the visual elements, I have a plugin installed. If you do not have this Google material icons installed, it's a very popular plugin. Just click add plugins, do a search for it, and then you'll see this material icon on the left panel of your bubble dashboard. And then look for the close icon, make it all the way white, and then X and Y, give it a value of four, and then 24 for the height. Okay. And then let's go ahead and make sure that this is fixed with, yes, and this is fixed with this text. Okay, and one thing for this, we want to make sure that it's not, because we want to control, we want to make sure that it's not visible on page load because we want to control it being shown or not. All right, so we're making very good progress here on our pop-up. What I want to show off here is over in the responsive tab, tab this over one to the fixed margin for the left there, and then fixed margin to the right for that. So that way you get, uh, otherwise if you don't do that, you won't see the behavior that you expect. You just expect that you know something on the left would stay on the left and something on the right would stay on the right when the responsiveness has changed. Okay, so now uh, head over to your plugins area. If you do not have the Video.js plugin installed, go ahead and do a search for Video.js and click install. So we've got a nice free option here. There of course are other paid ones which are more advanced and those will be covered perhaps in a later video. But once you have that set up, or once you have that plugin installed rather, 
drag in this from this video.js. We're going to call this our video.js. Video.js, video element. And we are going to set that up with a 260 by 160, sorry, 240 rather. Center that horizontally and give it a Y position of 50. And then, okay, so we do want it to autoplay, and now here are the settings to deal with for this. So go ahead and insert a dynamic link, parent groups, and we will, what we want to find here is the video. And then for the dynamic image, we want to do something very similar, grab the parent groups, thumb photo. Sometimes you'll see, I don't see it here on this one. Oh yeah, I do, okay. So it gave, it gave a, uh, an error to fill this out. Sometimes you will not see this. But if you do, simply just copy this expression, paste it here, and then clear this and that error will go away and things will display nicely. We don't actually need um, this filled in because we're filling it in dynamically through this value. So a small bug there with this particular plugin, uh, but it's free, so cool. Um, <clears throat> next up, go to just grab, copy and pasting that uh, other piece of text, and we're gonna hit to, let's see, 40 here. We wanna center that horizontally. I'm gonna go 14 with a line spacing 1.5 and then a color of B3, B3, B3. Okay, so that's really it for our, uh, we want 227 here for the Y, but that's really it for our user interface. Basically, we, we've got this nice pop-up that will show up, and next up we need to connect the workflow to have that show up, so let's do that. Here under our group home, and this is important, so wherever in your user interface that you're going to have something be clicked and show up the video, and if you skipped ahead to this to uh, bypass the UI building of that, uh, pop up, then this is the part you want to pay attention to, is whatever element that you're going to um, show or use, have, have the user interact with, have them aka click with, you'll want to make sure that the data associated with that action prior to showing the actual video um, help, or that the data is passed some way to the video. I'll show you how it's passed in mine. Um, it's passed by grabbing the current cell, so whether it's this one or this routine three or what, what have you, it'll pass that data into the pop up, and that pop up as we saw, is set to receive it because it's the right type of content. And then the yoga, or the actual video element that is within this pop-up. So this pop-up now has a, this data, and this is the connection that I'm saying that you'll need to make on your user interface because it depends on how your user interface is set up. You might have a video sitting on a page, so that page needs to have that data type. And that data, it just needs to be there when the user clicks it and then when the user is expecting to see it. And now because we have this set to autoplay, we uh, don't actually need to do anything in our workflow. We just need to display that and then show the group video pop-up. Okay, and then some other things that we want to have happen though is that we want to be able to close this pop-up. So here we're going to hide, but we're also going to pause the video. So if you, under element actions, if you have a video player on your page, you get this action from the video.js to pause the video. And there's only one video element, so it automatically fills that in for us. Great, so let's take a look at our progress. All right, so if we click on here, we can see that we get an auto-playing video. And we can close it out. Ah, and we didn't update this description. But basically, okay, there's one last thing that I wanna point out is that when this is up and you can see uh, that it's just a group that looks like a pop-up, you can't actually click away from it, so to, you have to click the X. That's kind of annoying. So to solve that, what we want to do is we're going to duplicate this, and we're going to say when the group home, which is this group, the group that houses everything here that's in the background, so in your world, whatever your background major group is, you're going to want to say when that is clicked, but only when the pop-up is visible. So you want that conditional on there. So then we know, we kind of know what situation we're dealing with. And then there's one other thing to add to this. So like when this is up, we can click out of it. But if we click, if we click for example into one of these next ones, we actually see that that, so that um, it starts to play from the other video. So you'll have to look, if you're going to make this style of pop-up, you'll have to look on your uh, user interface that any of these other ones. So now I'm going to go with this top row image. And then that should solve it. If there are any other, other elements that you click them and you don't get the expected behavior, that's how you can solve it. So here I can be scrolled over and I can click that, but it still goes out rather than playing. 
So that is how you set up a very simple video player in Bubble. I hope you enjoyed. If you have, like the video, subscribe to us for more great tutorials, and I'll see you in a future video.